Hello my friends, welcome again to a new Lenten experience and focusing on God's Word. We are ending week three of our journey on our way to Easter. This is your pastor Yudin. John 3, 14 to 21. So, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, in the same way the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may share in the life of God's new age. This, you see, is how much God loved the world, enough to give His only special Son so that everyone who believes in Him should not be lost, but should share in the life of God's new age. After all, God didn't send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but so that the world could be saved by Him. Anyone who believes in Him is not condemned, but anyone who doesn't believe is condemned already, because they didn't believe in the name of God's only special Son. And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light, because what they were doing was evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light. People like that don't come to the light, in case their deeds get shown up reproved. But people who do the truth come to the light, so that it can become clear that what they have done has been done in God. So, this is how much God loved the world, writes John. Enough to give his only special son. And after all, he goes on. God didn't send the son into the world to condemn the world, but so that the world could be saved by him. How difficult is it to get the balance right? On the cross, when Jesus died, goes to him, the wrath of God was satisfied. If God is not wrathful against these and so many other distortions of human vocation, he is not loving, and it is his love determining the deal with that nasty, insidious, vicious, soul-destroying evil that causes him to send his only special son. But how does the sending of the son deal with evil? Isn't it just a futile, grandiose gesture? John's whole gospel is his large-scale answer to this question. And unless we read the entire book with this in mind, we will miss the point. But in the present passage, we are given a single, very cryptic clue. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, in the same way the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may share in the life of God's new age. 
The story is told in Numeri 21. I mean in Numbers, sorry, in Numbers in the Old Testament, chapter 21. The Israelites grumbled as they were always doing. And God allowed a plague of poisonous snakes to come and attack them. A deep evocative symbol of the scaly, slithering discontent of their minds and heart. As people were dying from the snake bites, God commanded Moses to make a bronze replica of a serpent and put it on a pole, urging the people to look at this uplifted snake and live. The snake on the pole in terms has to become a symbol of healing to this day. No further explicit explanation is given in Numbers or by John as to, so to speak, how this worked enough to know that you were at death's door and that God had provided a remedy. The remedy. The present passage is not primarily an exposition of atonement theology, but of the faith that grasp and so is healed by the God-given, love-giving solution to the urgent problem, so that everyone who believes, everyone who believes, anyone who believes, that clearly is what John is emphasizing here. Perhaps this is one of the most important lessons of the Lenten journey. The meaning of the cross will come upon us like a great shadow into which we must walk in the days to come. At the moment, it is enough to know that we are traveling to the place where we will see Jesus lifted up so that we may escape the condemnation that so many find welling up within the darkness of their own hearts and which they fear may one day be issued by God himself. But it is God who is saying in Jesus, no, that's not the point. I have sent my son to rescue you from that condemnation. Yes, it is true. People love darkness rather than light and don't want to come in the light. Again, every pastor knows that only too well. There's a glorious, beautiful world out there, but some people turn in on themselves, bundling themselves up in darkness to avoid being dazzled. But the God who came into the world in the person of his Son, the Word of Life, can and will speak this gentle, powerful invitation once more. Come to the light, look at the Son of Man, lift it up for you. Think the unthinkable. This is how much God loved the world. Believe, trust, and share already in the present time, the life of God's new age. Thank you, Father, for your boundless and lavish love. If we could only grasp the unconditional love of God, but I do think we cannot fully understand. There's so much with wrong, so much, there's so much and so many distractions in our life. And also some people say, I don't do anything wrong, why should I walk in darkness? I don't feel that I am in darkness. But that's not the point. God opened the door in the death of Christ for the world. Because we're living in a falling world, and God is healing that to give everyone the chance to come to Him and to live in a relationship with Him. So it's up to us.
May you never let go in what you experience already in your relationship with God. And may it be improved as you walk on your way to Easter. God's blessing. This is your Pastor Yeti. Bye-bye.